Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we're actually going to be scaling Fatalis. So, I actually think you guys will enjoy this. As you guys can see here, I'm actually going to be using my Northosaurus gameplay as kind of a mediator, but you guys have already seen my review and rating for it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment down below, like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And believe it or not, we're actually going to be using the full lore of Monster Hunter. I know a lot of people say, well, you can't take the lore seriously. But then again, these do be the same people that take the lore for God of War seriously. So, I'm not really too... How do I say it? I'm not really too uh, convinced by those kind of arguments here. But we're going to have to start off with Nergigante as a scale here. Now, the reason why I'm starting off with Nergigante is because he is the top tier when it comes to Elder Dragons. Outside of, well, Dalmador and I think Raviente or Laviente here, Nergigante is usually seen as the powerhouse among Elder Dragons and is for a good reason he is the apex predator of it and he pretty much starts the scaling off pretty easily scaling above each and every elder dragon and elder dragon level monster pretty easily as well considering he is known to deal with the final boss in game elder dragons and we also know he is above primordial malzeno because of their velcana interaction whereas primordial malzeno has to put in a lot of effort to deal with velcana nergigante does it with well absolute ease now this is actually pretty important here because where do these monsters actually scale well it's pretty simple here negagante can actually get to large planetary yeah i know it sounds pretty crazy for an elder dragon but again it's actually not hard to see now you see the average elder dragon here usually gets from around island to country level to multi-continental Beings like Kusha Deora can disperse snowstorms, characters like Teostra and Lunastra can create supernovas and are able to rival and match Kusha Deora pretty easily, which is around the island level capacity. However, the continental stuff comes in here from characters like some characters or excuse me, monsters like Xeno Jiva, who was actually able to create the Rotten Veil vale by destroying multiple young Dalmadors. Yeah, I know, it pretty 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 insane, right? And can we put in mind as well? that both Nergigante and Xenojiva were planning on feeding on the Zoro Magdaros energy, which actually yielded country levels of force. However, this is because the new world, well, well, honestly, this was before the Iceborne update, I should really say here. With the Iceborne update, this now bumps Nergigante up to multi- continental and as you guys can see here there is a quote from the guy but then nergagante would have killed sherry ishvalda regardless if they were at full power or not so with that being said here nergagante should easily scale above um <clears throat> excuse me sherry ishvalda here and then we get into the rise scaling but for right now the average elder dragon okay would be in the low country tiers to the multi-continental ranges. Again, this is because they do scale off of Nair Gigante and they're able to fight each other and are known as ecosystem destroyers, which would equate to them destroying, well, entire regions altogether, which are around the size of either states or countries depending on the various regions or the various maps, all right? So again, pretty much would update Nair Gigante scaling. And again, remember this is pre-rise scaling here where Iceborne, he would be around the country level to, well, multi-continental or moon level as he would scale above Sher Ishvalda significantly. Now, let's go into the rise scaling, right? Now, this actually updates a lot, and I mean a lot of monsters here, putting even Elder Dragon level Deviants on a much higher level. Beings like Hellblade, Glavinus, Thunderlords and Ogre, and even, um... <clears throat> gold rathian and silver rathlos and obviously flaming espinas as well as they're all capable of dealing with elder dragons but again know that the amount of effort they have to put in just to beat one elder dragon where negagante casually is again slamming them and again with you know the whole primordial malzeno scaling malzeno would actually scale above the rest of these monsters as well now keep in mind gold rathian by monster hunter um i think it was stories as well which is again another alternate multi monster hunter verse we'll be getting into that later where gold rathian is able to create black holes now believe it or not creating black holes seems to be a very interesting and somewhat consistent thing when it comes to elder dragon level monsters as well and even elder dragon level oh sorry elder dragons themselves here for example 
Geismagorn. Now, we know that Primordial Malzano should scale above Geismagorn as he was able to beat him a long time ago, with the Kuros then attaching themselves to Primordial Malzano and then him becoming just simply Malzano, actually being much weaker than what he originally was here. So, with that being said as well, Geismagorn is able to create black holes for his ultimate by using dragon energy this is pretty interesting because he's probably using dragon energy to actually tear a hole in reality and being able to suck things in and then i think it goes to make an explosion afterwards as well it's been a while since i played the game or, or watched a clip here but yeah you guys get what i mean here so this will put the final scale for Nergigante as I think he would pretty much crush the absolute living heck out of Geismagorm here. This would put Nergigante at large, planet level. Now you might say legendary, why is Nergigante important? Well, that's because the next few dragons, okay, are easily capable of one-shotting him. This would bring us to part two where we have the Elatrion, Sapphire Jiva, and Dire Morales scaling part. Now, Dire Morales is definitely a bit of a weird one as he doesn't have the same lore as these two. So this is basically going to be me giving a speculation about where he would pretty much rank here. Now, we do know Monster Hunter does have some universal lore, thanks to the likes of Shad Domador actually being able to create the heavens, which is a universal feat, possibly around the fourth dimensional margin. And then there are there <clears throat> there is, excuse me, the Tell of the First Five. The Tell of the First Five indicates that there were five Elder Dragons, ancient, the gods of the verse, right? Being able to fill an infinite void with every single concept, time, space, reality, etc. Elatrion, everyone's favorite blazing black dragon here, has, is confirmed to be so powerful that the gods themselves fear it. So these beings that were able to create the entire Monster Hunter verse fear Elatrion. Now, this is actually pretty important because Monster Hunter may even be a multiverse as well. Considering the sheer fact that every hunter is different from one another and the fact that we both have the manga we have the Raid Hunter, the Capcom Hunter, and then there's also the Teppin Hunter or the Teppin Verse as a whole, which takes in Monster Hunter Verse and just throws them in with other Capcom continuities, much like Marvel's Capcom Infinity and obviously Raid Shadow Legends as well. But again, these are all different hunters from obviously different realities, as no hunter is the same. The hunter you use from one region is different from another region. But then again, we also know that these regions are connected in the same verse with the mainline game now we're not using crossover scaling we're using the mainline game the point is is that monster hunter may even be a multiverse rather than a simple universe you get me now moving on elatron would actually be equal to if not slightly lesser than sapphire jiva now sapphire jiva was meant to absorb so much energy that he was going to rival that of Fatalis. Now, the way I think it would have went here is that Elatron and Sapphire Jiva were going to have this turf war that would have caused the planet to be destroyed, right? However, Sapphire Jiva would have somehow have found some way to be Elatron, right? Exhort Elatron's own bio energy and obviously his dragon energy, his other elemental energies, stuff like that, right? And then would have added him to himself to become a much more effective rival towards Fatalis. Now, again, I probably did just blaze over the Dire Morales part, but it's very possible he is either below or could actually be somewhat stronger or just physically stronger than the others, but would lose because he just doesn't have the axes. Now, let's move on to Fatalis himself, right? Now, Everything I just said here would actually put the other black dragons around a multiversal margin. Both Sapphire Jiva and Xeno Jiva I would actually consider equal and would actually stalemate or one has a hacks advantage over the other. This would easily put them at multiversal because they're above the guys that created the entire verse. Or at least multiversal plus if you guys want to get it to there. Now, Fatalis himself not only being above the others but is known to transcend the likes of space and time. This is important because we know that the other fatalities or the other versions of himself are above the is above his black form, obviously. Now, Crimson Fatalis is noted to be stronger, but not by that of a significant margin, mm -hmm. which is actually impressive, meaning it is a one times difference between the two, or maybe the tiering between the two is not so high to where 
you know, it's <laughs> to where it's not that um, big of a difference in power. Meaning that, again, you would probably say that Black Fatalis could give his upper form a go, but not really beat it, if you guys get what I mean here. Now, for White Fatalis, White Fatalis should actually be a significant portion or at least a much more noticeable amount above his other forms here. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because White Fatalis not only has a basic, pretty much a base form, but he also gets a zenith increase. Now, zenith increases, I really haven't multiplied the factors of it here, but zeniths are basically the monsters that you actually fight, but they're enhanced to such a higher level that they're just simply far beyond the regular species. Now, Xenof Fatalis or Xenof White Fatalis is actually known to have unbelievable power that cannot be rivaled. This is important because that means there is no equal to it. And keep in mind, um, this Fiora is actually above this guy. Yeah, that, that says a lot, right? Now, what makes this important here is that we can actually get a decent calculation from this here. So with Negrigante being large planet due to the feats I provided earlier, earlier Sherry Ishvalda being universal or possibly 4D because he was able to create the heavens, the first five being multiversal as they were the creators of it, Elytrion and Sapphire Geo and possibly Dire Morales would be multiversal and multiversal plus, Black Fatalis would be above them, so this would make him into the lower complex multiversal stages, Crimson Fatalis not that much above him, so he would probably get a plus, and then you would probably have white fatalis being a decent portion above them meaning he would probably be complex multiversal plus meaning that crimson fatalis excuse me messed that one up earlier would actually be in the more complex multiversal margin now again this is using the lore now let's say if you don't want to use the lore and you want to go by just simple feats and calcul calculations then fatalis would just be universal I mean, you have Shadow Mador, who is still able to create multiple stars, blue stars, mind you, because of his fire breath. And this would easily get him into the multi solar system level. Black Fatalis would still scale above the likes of Elatrion and Sapphire Jiva, who'd be above that. So they both easily would be galaxy level, right? And then Black Fatalis would get to Universal. Then you would probably have Universal Plus for a Crimson Fatalis, as it's not that much above them. And then you would probably have high universal for um, white fatalis. So either way, he's still a very dangerous threat altogether. But again, this is taking away the lore of the first five as well, which I don't think is fair for the verse because that is how the verse was made. And the black dragons at the very least somewhat scaled to it in a way based off their lore and the statements provided. But that's going to be all today, you guys, and you have a blessed day. Let me know what you guys think down below. Peace.